Why hello, welcome back. It is a new month, which means a brand new list of brand new games releasing, some of which at least hopefully turn out to be worth playing. Today we are back with yet another overview of the best looking upcoming new games, this one for July 2023. This also means where I'm going to get a whole host of comments asking why some popular recently released game isn't in this month's list, like say Diablo 4. Well, it's not in this month's list because it didn't release in this month. This list are specifically about new games coming in the month. I don't know why I have to explain this. Every single single every single month every single list what is so hard to understand anyways july new games and in order of release date we are kicking things off with exoprimal this is a team-based pvevp third person shooter in this game we pilot exosuits completing objectives and competing against other players while fighting our way through hordes of dinosaurs that rain from the sky quite literally that's not just like an exaggeration they actually fall from the sky combat in this game is looking really slick and from some of the early hands-on impressions videos that i saw the feedback is looking really good with what people are saying are responsive controls great visual and audio feedback and just all around seems like it's a pretty snappy and fun game to play the setup and structure of exoprimal is pretty straightforward two teams of five will compete in these objective based modes trying to be the first ones to complete specific tasks while also fighting back dinosaurs and all of this culminates in a round of PvP as sort of the final showdown. So the game features 10 different exosuits, each with their own weapons and abilities, and these will fill one of three distinct roles. Basically, these function like classes in any other team-based shooter. So you'll have variations on things like assaults, tanks, and supports for you to pick from. Team synergy, as you might expect, is going to play a big role with each and every exosuit being stronger or weaker, depending on what type of enemy you're fighting, what sort of dinosaur, are they single target or big hordes do you need a support do you need someone tanking the front lines and then also pvp is going to require its own combinations of exosuits to take on and counter whatever your opponents pick speaking of which you are able to swap suits on the fly this isn't a game where you're just picking one exosuit and sticking with it for the entire match no you can freely swap it basically at any point from what i could tell so the game is divided into two main sections starting with the pve so each and every match will start with a pre-lobby here you select your initial exosuit suit as well as a rig and these rigs basically just allow for further customization of your weapons and abilities when the match begins you'll be taking on one of a variety of game modes there's things like payload push where you have to move a payload while fighting back dinosaurs as you progress from point a to b elimination where you basically run through a course clearing massive groups of dinosaurs in each and every mode and there's many more than this you will also be competing against the other team of players to try to finish that objective the fastest or rack up the highest score Score. So as you move through things, you're actually going to see the opposing team's ghost, and this is going to give you an idea of how well you're doing if you're ahead or behind them. And it turns out actually if one team falls too far behind, there's like a catch-up mechanic where you can summon in a player-controlled Tyrannosaurus Rex and use them to try to disrupt the enemy team. It's got a combination of enemy dino types. There's the bog standard, traditional, real-life dinos like the raptors, triceratops, pterodactyls, and the like, but also neosaurs, which are these mutated magical dinosaurs with all sorts of special powers and abilities. After completing the first phase of objectives, whatever that happens to be, you will then move into phase two. At this point, you are teleported to a new location and given a new task. This is where the PvP kicks in, because in most cases, the second phase of any match is primarily PvP focused. In addition to whatever your new goals are, you're also able to directly fight the opposing team. Exoprimal is looking pretty cool. This is definitely one of my uh, most anticipated new games coming in July. It'll be releasing on July 14th, coming to PC, Xbox, and PlayStation for $59.99. This is also a game that is going to be available day one on Game Pass. Now, normally it would be time for me to tell you about the second game on this list, but right now it's actually time for me to tell you about today's sponsor, Holtzkern. These are really unique watches made of all natural materials, including various kinds of wood and stone. I recently got their sternum watch. This particular model is made out of zebra wood and black metal. I've been wearing it for a couple of weeks now on the rare occasions that I'm not gaming and making videos and I decide to leave the house and I really like it. You know, it's clearly made of high quality materials. It feels durable. It's comfortable to wear. And most importantly, I just think they look neat, which is pretty vital for anything that you are going to be wearing. It's also got some pretty neat features uh being an automatic watch it means there is no battery for you to ever replace it can be wound by hand but also will wind itself as you move around it's also got this see-through case back which lets
lets you see all of the inner workings, which I think is really cool. There's a ton of different styles. They've actually created over 800 designs over the years. And there's a lot of these that I really like, like as I was browsing through picking my own watch. Now, all of their products from these watches, but also things like sunglasses and jewelry, all of this comes with a 24 month warranty as well as a 24 day right of return. So if you are interested in checking out Holtzkern for yourself or as a gift for someone, be sure to follow my link in the description below and use code FORCE15 for an extra 15% off your purchase. Okay, now it is actually time to move on to the second game in this month's list, and that is Jagged Alliance 3. This is the latest installment in the acclaimed turn-based tactics series that dates all the way back to the mid-90s. This time around, an elected president has gone missing and a paramilitary force has seized control of a country, you commanding a group of skilled mercenaries with their own unique personalities, quirks, and backstories are now tasked with restoring order. Beyond that story setup, Jagged Alliance 3 comes with pretty much everything that you would expect. Before each and every mission, you're going to select from a roster of characters, assembling a team that ideally balances out each of their strengths to fill their distinct roles to take on whatever the challenge upcoming is going to be. There's now a whole new cast of characters, as well as some returning familiar fan favorites. The gameplay has you engaging with that tactical turn-based combat with a few new modern day twist bells and whistles. Beyond fighting, you'll be looting and salvaging, allowing you to customize an arsenal of weaponry and equipment. It's a full sandbox playground with every mission having a wide range of possible approaches. You can sneak in the back, go in guns blazing, or try to set up traps. As you progress, your mercs will gain experience and level up, letting you choose from an array of perks to specialize in. They've also said it's got this open RPG structure where the choices you make will impact the outcome and some of the story. There's a bunch of high-level meta systems like territory control, letting you train the locals to defend themselves. You can also command multiple units simultaneously, and the game is going to offer a host of customization options, letting you tailor the challenge with three difficulty tiers, as well as a bunch of game rules to choose from, such as dead is dead with regular auto saves and permadeath for your characters to the bitter end, which disables saving dur during combat. There's lethal weapons, which make it so there's no down state and your mercs will die when reaching zero HP, and then forgiving mode, which makes it so the recovery from tough situations is that much easier. The game also has online co-op, letting you play through the entire campaign with other players. Jagged Alliance 3 is coming to PC via Steam on July 14th for $44.99. There's also currently a 20% discount if you buy a pre-release version of the game, although as always I suggest waiting for reviews before you spend your money unless you can of course get a refund, which you should be able to when it comes to Steam, if you don't play too much, that is, at least, and if you don't abuse the <laughs> refund system. But anyways, yeah, there you go, Jagged Alliance 3. Next up is Ember Knights, an action roguelite that follows the traditional rogue formula. You start with nothing, progress through levels, getting stronger as you go, while also taking on more difficult challenges. Combat is all about reading enemy attacks, positioning yourself, dodging, and deciding when to strike. So go in, fight enemies, clear the room, collect an upgrade, and then choose from a branching path, deciding where you want to go next, depending on what it is you might need. Other staples of the genre seen here include a bunch of different weapons and skills to choose from, these large boss battles that present themselves as challenging fights that basically act as a skill and gear check for each and every run. There's a variety of merchants. These will sell things like consumables, relics, and new skills. Consumables include health potions and the like. Relics are passive abilities and skills are active abilities that you can have up to two at any given time. There's an account-wide progression with these relic unlocks, which will grant you access to brand new passive abilities for future runs, basically opening up the variety of things that you can unlock as you progress through the game. And this can be played solo or in co-op with groups of up to four. Ember Knights officially launches on July 18th on the PC and Switch. Now the game has been in Steam Early Access since April 2022, and currently the user reviews sit at overwhelmingly positive. So if you like this style of game, it seems like this might be a pretty safe bet. Next up on the list is Remnant 2, sequel to Remnant from the Ashes, or as it's otherwise known, Dark Souls with Guns. The original game, which released back in 2019, was by all accounts an indie success story. A small development studio at the time, Gunfire Games, really put together what ended up being quite a solid experience. Not without its jank, it had some of its issues and rough edges, but overall was a really fun game. Now Remnant 2 is looking to take the best of that original and add on top of it. The game, for one, looks a lot better, that is for sure, with much cleaner and more polished visual style 
scale, but more importantly, it aims to offer more engaging combat, deeper progression systems, and just more fleshed out features and game experience overall. The combat continues to offer that mix of ranged and melee gameplay as you strategically engage with enemies and larger than life bosses. Everything here has received an overhaul. The ranged weapons should feel better to shoot and melee looks to actually be a viable real play style. Enemies are also said to have a wider variety of attacks. There are also going to be more enemies and more ways for them to engage with the player. They've also updated the stamina system. So now this only depletes while you're in combat. So you don't have to worry about running out of breath as you're just walking around and exploration got a big overhaul as you can now jump gaps. There's going to be a lot more verticality to the levels that you move yourself through. Speaking of the levels, a whole bunch of new worlds with multiple new locations to explore, each with procedurally placed layouts and will be full of new creatures, weapons, and items to find. Progression system has been expanded. The archetype system for one offers these unique passive bonuses and powers. It's basically like the class system, but this time around you are able to multi-class equipping multiple archetypes, creating essentially custom combinations. So you can have uh, any sort of combo of whatever classes you want. Pre pretty, pretty cool. And this seems to offer a lot of potential and replayability. That is a staple of a game like this. And they are saying it is stronger than ever with branching quest lines, augments, crafting and loot that you'll be bringing with you into the dynamically generated levels and dungeons. Even the tutorial has procedural elements. So no two tutorials will evidently be the same. Remnant 2, I am incredibly excited about this one. It will be coming to PC, Xbox and PlayStation on July 25th for $49.99. Telltale Games, developer of the critically acclaimed Walking Dead video game series has a new title coming out based on the Expanse franchise. Following Kamina Drummer, we'll be exploring the dangerous and uncharted edges of the belt aboard the Artemis, scavenging wrecked ships in Zero G, surviving mutinies, combating fearsome pirates, and making difficult choices along the way. Some of the major features of this game include Zero G gameplay as we scour shipwrecks and use mag boots to walk along walls and ceilings, also utilizing thrusters to float through the void. They are calling this the largest and most immersive exploration in any Telltale game to date. We'll be managing a crew that are rife with tense relationships and powerful personalities. We'll have to make tough decisions that decide everyone's fate. The game includes five episodes of story for us to play through with choices made in one directly impacting what happens in another. The Expanse, a Telltale series, will be launching on July 27th. It is coming to PC, Xbox, and PlayStation for $39.99. Now, Immortals of Avium was also supposed to be on the main section of this list as it was originally scheduled to release on July 20th. This is that new first-person magic shooter from EA. Unfortunately, that game was recently delayed. It is now coming out in August, so we'll be pushing it over to that month's list when the time comes. So that concludes the main part of the list, but we have got, of course, some bonus games to mention as well as a few betas that you can check out. First up on the bonus games is Guilt. This is a rather unique looking narrative adventure game that has you exploring this fictional old mining town set in the state of Maine. Yeah, that's a pretty cool place there, bub. Yeah, uh, it's, the game is full of puzzles, stealth and action, they say. You'll be navigating and discovering clues in the world, figuring out the mystery behind one of your friend's disappearance. You also can also take on creatures directly or stay in the shadows with an array of tools to distract and hide from the foes. Guilt launches on July 6th, and I just think this is a really unique looking game. Like, I really like the presentation and style of this one. Next up on July 13th, we've got Testament to the Order of High Human. This is a first person single player action adventure game that combines bits of RPG and Metroidvania elements. It offers a unique mixing of combat with different potential combinations of sword, spells, and bow as you're also moving through this environment with platforming and puzzles. This kind of seems like an indie Elder Scrolls game if I were to be super reductive. This one again launches on July 13th. On July 26th, we're seeing the re PC release of Ratchet and Clank Rifts Apart. Don't have to say too much about this game. Pretty popular, well known. The game reviewed really well. Uh, it's, it's the newest Ratchet and Clank game. Now, some of the PC features include ultra wide support for 21 by 9, 32 by 9, and 48 by 9 resolution. They've got unlocked frame rates with ray traced reflections and shadows, support for NVIDIA DLSS, as well as AMD FSR and Intel XESS, all of which give performance enhancing upscaling. There's a wide variety of graphical options, which of course you expect from a PC game, and they support achievements and cloud saves for the various PC game launchers. Ratchet and Clank, it's coming to PC. Pretty safe bet here. Reviews have been out for a while, as long as the port isn't total trash, which um, not taking that for granted nowadays as 
we've had a really rough time here on the PC. And then finally on bonus games, we have got Tales and Tactics. We don't have a release date, but it is scheduled for some time in July. This is a roguelike squad based auto battler that was actually developed by a bunch of Slay the Spire modders. It's set on this tabletop RPG setting. You'll be drafting an army, army that you'll carefully equip and position your units, make important choices and meet a colorful cast of characters. Really cool, unique looking game. A couple of beta tests that I wanted to make you aware of that are uh, some of which available right now. So we've got the Division Heartland. That beta started on June 27th. This is basically Division Survival Mode with more objectives. And I think it's also got some extraction elements in it, but pretty keen on this one. So if you get access to the beta, check it out. I'm going to for sure. Arc Raiders has a beta on June 29th. This is that third person PvPVE extraction shooter set in like Mars or something. It's out in space. Really cool, slick look to this one. Love the presentation. I've been anticipating this one for a while. We've also got Warhammer Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin. They have a beta on July 7th. This is a Warhammer real-time strategy game. And then also uh, Path of Exile 2, as far as I know, is supposed to be getting a beta sometime soon. I don't know if it's going to be happening in July, but I think it is in the realm of possibility. So that is it for this month's list of new upcoming games. When it comes to my choices, the things that I am most likely to play this month and check out, I'm going to put the top two as Exo Primal. I think this looks cool, even if it's just to mess around for a few days to a week. Seems like it could be a good bit of fun. I also like these games that come out that have PvP when they first launch. Tends to be a bit of a mess before people really understand and get their bearings, and I like messing around in that time frame for these games. It's just really enjoyable, mainly because you could stomp a bunch of noobs, right? <laughs> Any, eventually I become the noob though, so it's fine, I get it, right? And then also Remnant 2, I am so pumped for this. This is my number one most anticipated new game coming out in July. I cannot wait, it looks to be a lot of fun. Big, big improvements on the original and I'm super excited about that. Other than that, I'm hoping to jump into and check out the beta test for both Division Heartlands and Arc Raiders. But there you go. That does it for this month's list. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope you found it helpful and useful. Let me know what you think below. Also, be sure to leave your comments about why. Why isn't Diablo 4 on this list? Why isn't other recently released popular game on this list? Why is it the, the reason is because it didn't release in July. If it's coming out in July, that's how it makes it on the list. If it came out before July, it's not going to be on the list. I have to explain this every month drives me crazy. Most of you get it, but I swear some of you it's right over your heads. All right. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.